How's it going everybody? Steve here. Welcome back to my shop. And in this video, I want to do something a bit strange. I, I don't want to do a review. I don't want to necessarily build something, although I will at by the end uh, put something together. What I wanted to do here is kind of cover a lot of things at once. And we'll start from uh, a continuation of the RA2 Pro rotary attachment I did in the previous video, and I'll put a link up above here. Now what I want to do is respond to a viewer comment from Game On UK, and I'll put his message up above here. Uh, he, he is looking for uh, just some techniques on how to engrave on mugs, things with handles. Uh, and it's actually pretty hard if you have rollers because uh, the handle gets in the way and it just throws everything off. So. Uh, because I recently had the RE2 Pro, uh, it has a chuck, and I wanted to kind of start with that, but I want to plug it into a CO2 laser, uh, in this case my Muse 3D, and uh, you know just prove that it will work with virtually any laser ever created, and uh, uh, you know start from there, and then actually do an engraving on a mug with a handle to in response to this viewer question and show you how I did that. So it, it's a bit of a hodgepodge, but I wanted to cover a lot of things here. So uh, let's get started. So because I'm starting with my Muse 3D, uh, I have a few things to do. The Muse uh, comes with a connector built in for the rotary attachment that they sell. Uh, now their rotary attachment is uh, roughly a thousand dollars the last time I looked. Uh, versus the RE2 Pro that's uh, $260. So uh, there's definitely some incentive to looking for a cheaper alternative, but I'm not just looking at price here. I wanna look for something that's actually a better alternative. And uh, you know, to some degree, uh, maybe we take a poke at, at full spectrum laser for the price of their rotary. And they actually have two. They have one that's $1,200 as well, or $1,500. So they just go up from 1,000. So. Uh, now what I needed to do was crack open the side panel and find that rotary connector that they have. The, it's a stubby little cable that goes from the controller board into the inside of the laser. And then they provide you with another cable that plugs into that plug and then goes down to the rotary attachment. What I want to do is get rid of all of that and just use uh, a, a, an Amazon purchased uh, stepper motor cable. Now the cable itself is uh, a straight through cable, so pin one on, on one end goes to pin one on the other end, and there's uh, four pins there. Now these things generally come kind of pre-assembled on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below uh, if you want to pick some of these up, uh, these pre-built cables. And a uh, fair warning, you may have to uh, pop the, the cables out and rearrange them so you do have that one-to-one -one, uh, relationship between the two ends of the connector. One end actually has a six-pin connector, but there's two wires on the outsides of the connector and two in the center, and then there's two pins that are empty. Uh, but the relationship is still the same. And so you may have to do what I did here because the... Connectors are kind of randomly wired. There's two configurations that you can use, and uh, inevitably you'll get the one with the wrong the wrong setup. So, uh, what I'll show here in a in a quick snippet of video is how to pull those out. And really, you just lift uh, this thin black tab, and then the connector slides out of out of one end of the connector. And uh, once you do that, and you get the one to one relationship. Uh, you unplug the rotary cable that, that FSL provides and plug this one in in the right orientation with, the, uh, with pin one to the top and then run it through the cabinet and it's a bit of, of tedium to make that happen but everything is kind of popped together here so you can just kind of pop one side of the front panel uh, up a bit so you can get space to run the wire. Anyway, it's a long, long-winded explanation for basically run a cable from from the existing FSL controller for the rotary attachment over into, into the inside of the laser. And then in this case, we're going to use the RE2 Pro with the chuck attached and just plug it into the, the uh, stepper motor on the RE2 Pro. So that's it. Uh, once you have that, everything's ready to go. 
uh, you fire on the laser, do a home, uh, and then position the laser over top of your workpiece that uh, you can mount into the chuck. And uh, the first thing we need to do is determine the scale. Now, because FSL doesn't allow you to change things like the number of steps per millimeter uh, in, in the Retina Engrave 3 software, they used to, but they've done an update and they've taken that capability away. But that doesn't mean you can't use an RA2 Pro. So what I, what I did was just put some, some painter's tape on a, just a piece of pipe, anything tubular works fine because we're not actually really going to cut or do anything crazy with it. Uh, and then I took a, just a Sharpie and put a black mark on it and positioned the laser, red dot laser over top of that and rotate enough by enough millimeters to do one exact ro revolution. And in my case, that, that turned out to be 86.5 millimeters. Uh, the, the tube that I had stuck in there was actually 196 millimeters, so you can see there's quite a discrepancy. Uh, but anyway, we're going to use that 86.5 measurement, in my case yours might be different, to uh, determine scale for anything we're ever going to engrave. And in this case, uh, you know, kind of sticking with that, with that pipe with the blue painter's tape on it, and all I'm going to do is uh, just use a trick of RE3 uh, and, and go to the y-axis, I have proportional scaling turned off here, by the way, and uh, go to the y-axis value, which currently says 40, and just add a, mul a, a multiplier, so the, the asterisk, which is a time symbol in, in computer language. And so we're going to multiply the 40 by the scale that we've calculated, which is 29 point, or 0.2935. And uh, you'll see immediately that the circle turns into this squashed kind of ellipse on the y-axis, but that's okay. That's exactly what we want uh, because what that will do is, is do a conversion of the number of steps that the rotary does versus what the laser thinks it does. And, and uh, after that, we do an engrave and we pull the, the pipe off the laser and uh, we do that measurement, uh, particularly on the y-axis is the one we're interested in. Uh, and you'll see that it comes out to exactly 40 millimeters in, in this case. And so that's all you have to do. Now you will have to do this uh, for any item that you engrave. So a bigger item will have a bigger circumference, but you're still gonna multiply it by that, that scale factor, which is 85.6 millimeters, sorry, 86.5 millimeters. And, uh, you know, you'll come out with a scale and take it down to four digits of precision if you want. Now, note you can, in RE3, you can also click that transform button and just set the scale there because you can individually control the X and Y axis scales. Uh, I just find it's easier to do the multiplication um, because as soon as you start modifying the diagram, if you go back and make a change, then something strange happens. It doesn't really work properly if you use the transform. So uh, with that, we're ready to go uh, as far as doing an engrave. And uh, we'll pop a glass in here in the, uh, in the chuck and uh, we'll see what happens. So I have my mug clamped into the chuck here in the RE2 Pro and I'm using the two rollers that came uh, with the rotary attachment uh, on, the, on the other end to support this mug. It's quite heavy. Now, all I really need to do is put the, the laser head where I want to start my, my engrave. And you can do that just by moving the, the X. And you may have to disable the rotary in the case of a Muse 3D uh, to move the Y axis uh, to get it into the right spot and then re-enable the rotary. But all I'm really doing here is putting the, the Y axis in the center of the, the line of rotation. Uh, and as far as the x-axis, I want to start where, where the, for the height of the, the label that I'm doing, which is my company logo. And then I'm going to apply the scale to the y-axis. Uh, and you'll see again, it shrinks down to something quite tiny, but it, it'll come out okay when we engrave. And we can frame this a couple of times just to make sure that the glass is positioned where we, where we want the label to be. 
And after that, we just hit the run button and let the engrave start. And uh, here we go with that. So there's the engraving, and you can see the, the logo came out uh, the right size, uh, the y-axis especially, and uh, the engraving looks good. And now I used, uh, from RE3, I used about a full power, pretty much full power, and about 50% speed just to make sure that the, the engraving comes out good. I didn't really pay too much attention to alignment, so, so you know, the logo ended up kind of off center from the handle. If you're holding the handle, the logo isn't, isn't perpendicular to the, to, the, to the handle. So it uh, wasn't perfect, but that wasn't the intent here. The intent was to just make sure we could use the RA2 Pro and, and show you how to engrave a mug with a handle. And you can see it's pretty easy. Now, if you are interested in the RE2 Pro, I'll put a link uh, to a video that I did just recently to review it. And uh, I'll also put a link to, uh, to an affiliate link in the description below. If you're interested in buying one, uh, please use that link. You can help out the channel. And uh, other than that, uh, go get yourself an RE2 Pro, even if you have a CO2 laser, and make your world. And I'll see you next time.